Hello there, people of the internet. I am once again out here with a buddy's equipment. This is not mine, but he agreed to let me bring it out and fire it. This right here is a Chilean 7mm Mauser. Uh, this is an 1895 pattern, if memory serves me correctly. Um, I've actually never fired one of these, or I've never fired a 7mm Mauser in general. I've always wanted to, though, so luckily, thanks to my friend, I get the chance to go ahead and try one of these rifles out. I've always wanted to give it a shot, just never really had the opportunity to. And before I go investing in a 7mm Mauser rifle, I figured I'd go ahead and I'd uh, wait until I get the opportunity to actually try one out, as I have today. So, there's, go ahead and turn these on, fantastic. A uh, couple of things about this rifle, obviously it's a longer rifle, uh, a lot of times with these 7mm uh, Chilean Mausers you'll get like a carbine version, a much smaller version. Uh, I have a Vito Mauser that's very similar to the Chilean Mausers that you'll find uh, that are of a sm smaller nature, but this right here is a much longer version of that rifle. As a result, it's quite a deal heavier than uh, my small ring, small uh, Spanish Mausers that I have. And it is a, uh, I imagine it would be more accurate out to longer distance since the sight radius is longer if there was somebody who was shooting that was uh, a little bit better shot than I myself am. We do have this really beautiful crest on this thing. And this particular Chilean Mauser was actually manufactured in Berlin, a place called Loewe, L-O-E-W-E. -E. I'm sure somebody in the comments is gonna threaten to skin my family alive because I, mispronounced that name. Someone's also gonna tell me how I actually go about pronouncing that. This does load from stripper clips, which I do not have. Thank you, Kevin. Kevin, Kevin, that's enough. My goodness gracious. Kevin's my peacock. I got four of them. They're all named Kevin. Welcome to the channel if uh, this is your first time here. So seven millimeter Mauser ammunition. As a matter of fact, since I have not shot this rifle before, I'm just gonna check it for any bore obstructions, play it safe, bore is clear. This rifle appears to be in very good shape. Uh, this is a 95 pattern, so it is a little stronger than the 93, not quite as robust as the 98. And we have some soft point 7mm Mauser ammunition that we're going to be running down range. I do not know what these sights are zeroed in at. I have no idea. They do fold up like this, and I know while they're folded up, the minimum is 500 yards. So I'm assuming that this is either 200, 300, potentially 400. Looks like it goes up in 100 yard increments on the site. So maybe 400, I'm hoping 200. I'm gonna aim at a six o'clock on our steel silhouette since we're only at 100 yards. And we're gonna see where these rounds actually hit. Now my buddy had said that he had fired this rifle before. Many of his rifles he has not fired. So uh, I don't think I have anything to worry about with this rifle in terms of any safety issues. Uh, it seems to be functional. Let's see if it is accurate. Okay. Alright. First thing I'm noticing. Recoil is not that bad. The trigger, not that good. Uh, at least it's comfortable. I have no idea if I actually hit my steel. I just kind of aimed at the bottom of it. This is a caulk on close action. So you're fighting spring tension while you're caulking your rifle here. Let's go ahead and send another round down range and see if we have any marks on target afterwards. All right, I think we're making contact on target, but I'm not positive about it. I won't know until I actually walk down there. Uh, I will say compared to my Spanish Mausers, because I've never ran any, any Chilean Mausers, uh, compared to my Spanish Mausers, the sights on this one are way easier to use because the rear notch is not nearly as uh, hard to see as the rear notch on some of the Spanish ones. Let's walk down there, see where we're hitting, if we're hitting it at all. I'm just holding it six o'clock and I'm hoping that we're making hits on target. All right. So I think it's a safe bet to say they're probably a 300 yard zero if I had to make a rough guesstimation because I'm aiming down here and it looks like we're hitting up here. We hit both times, one right there, one right there. I try to aim more for this side of the target just in case we do hit high so I can see where I'm hitting. So I'm gonna aim a little bit lower and we're gonna see if we can make more center uh, shots with this rifle right here. So I'm assuming at 300 yards zero, we're only at about 100 yards, so that is not surprising at all. All right, recoil on this rifle is extremely manageable, especially from uh, the uh, heavier rifle that we have here. 
in comparison to like the shorter carbine versions of this rifle. Uh, seven millimeter Mauser is not a particularly potent round. So we have not that powerful of a round and a pretty heavy rifle. It definitely makes for a very good, comfortable shooting rifle. Trigger, not that great. Two stage trigger, uh, as most of your Mauser actions are gonna be. And the magazine here seems to malfunction from time to time. All right, I'm gonna aim a little bit lower at the target and we're gonna see if we can hit a little bit more center. All right, I'd like to think that was a good shot. I'd like to just assume that we hit right where I wanted to hit with this thing. Okay, I did one low and one really low. Let's wander down there and see what we're looking at. This thing is fun. I actually really like this Mauser rifle here. I really like this. I've always been an eight millimeter Mauser fan. I think I might be leaning towards seven millimeter Mauser because man, that is comfortable to shoot. All right, unexpected results. I bet we had a round go over. Maybe I'm not pulling as far down low as I should. This right here is the one that I thought I was aiming lower than I originally was. I'm going to aim like significantly lower. Like I only aimed a little bit lower thinking that it would be enough to compensate. Or maybe we had a round go right there. I mean, who knows what's gonna happen with these rounds here. I just heard something scream from the woods beside my house. I'm gonna go ahead and do what uh, most Americans would do and ignore it completely. Uh, I'm going to aim like a lot lower now. <laughs> like I aimed a little lower and we got like basically zero results. So I'm gonna aim a lot lower and we're gonna see if we can get more of a center shot on target. All right, I've got a few more rounds of seven millimeter Mauser here. Let's go ahead and aim even lower than I was. It already felt like I was aiming lower than I should be, but apparently not. All right, thank you, Kevin. I'm so glad that you're screaming right now. Damn, aiming this low on this target just feels wrong. All right, uh, I'm not certain about that one. <laughs> I'm not sure if I was aiming too low or not, in all honesty. Aiming as low as I am right now just feels wrong, but before I felt like I was aiming too low and apparently I wasn't. Let's try it this time. Okay, well, let's wander down there and see if I have any holes in the dirt, shall we? Or if we actually made some hits on our steel. All right, just due to me not knowing quite where to aim, I aimed one a little bit lower and then one a lot lower. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like you have to aim pretty significantly low on this thing to the point to where you feel like you're doing something wrong. Like I'm probably aiming about two feet under this target right here in order to make hits on target. It might be a 400 yard zero just with what I'm seeing here. So yeah, that's at six o'clock. That's probably, oh, I don't know, four inches or so under six o'clock. This right here, I was holding like two feet under six o'clock, but now I know relatively where to aim for this thing to get some center shots on target. And boy, oh boy, does it feel like I'm doing something wrong. Well, let's go do it again. All right, with how low I have to aim this rifle, I really do feel like I'm doing something wrong. I don't even have to aim as low as I do with my freaking Carcanos, Carcanos, however you want to pronounce those rifles. So this does shoot quite a deal high and I have to aim so far down to make hits on target. It's incredible. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had a rifle where I've had to aim so low under the target in order to make hits on target. All right, I'd like to think, I mean, I'm just aiming for a general area at this point. I don't have an actual reference point for my point of aim. So I'm just, I'm just spitballing about where, about where it would be for center target. I, I feel like I'm shooting so low, but I'm not. I think I see where my rounds are hitting too. Yeah, this is about where I want to be aiming here. Kablam ski. I, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. I am aiming so far under this target, it's unreal. 
But the actual rifle itself, I'm having a great time shooting it, especially now that I know where it's actually hitting. All right. <laughs> This rifle is freaking ridiculous. Let's wander down and look at this. Look at those shots. I was aiming so far into the target. That is breathtakingly unreal how far down I had to aim to make hits on target. I know I hit at least some. I see a big dark spot on the target now. So I know I hit at least some. Let's wander down there and have a look at what our target looks like now. All right, here's our shots. We made all of our hits on target. Definitely way more centered than we were. We got one, two, three, four shots right there. Okie dokie, I was aiming, God, I was aiming so low. Like I was probably aiming at the dirt <laughs> over there. That was, that was incredible. I'm not sure what the zero is on this. I'm willing to bet either three or 400 yards with how low I have to aim since we're only shooting at about 100 yards or so at this distance. So these are of course gonna hit exceptionally high since the rifle is zeroed for so far out. Uh, Gravity is gonna pull the rounds down to where whenever they hit uh, at that 400 yard mark, you'd be hitting right where it is that you're actually aiming. I'm not sure if it's actually 400 yards, but that would be my guesstimation with how low I have to aim this blasted rifle. Okay, well, I am officially a fan of the seven millimeter Mauser. Uh, once I figured out point of aim, this is a very accurate rifle. Holy crap. Recoil, basically non-existent since it's such a long, heavy gun. Uh, this is very pleasurable to shoot. It's got an ant on it though. Let's get that out of there before it goes biting me. I've got plenty of bites from all sorts of things that I've had to deal with today while I was uh, rifle running. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get one. My buddy watches these videos that I make. I know you're watching this. I'm gonna have to get one. Some kind of seven millimeter Mauser, just because my goodness, this is an immaculately good round. Okay, I am a fan. Not necessarily a fan with how high it shoots. I feel like I'm doing something wrong whenever I'm lobbing lead down range, but I made, I made my hits on target. So I figured it out. Hey, just saying. Thanks for watching folks. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Description down below has a link to all sorts of stuff. Go and go check that out. If you have anything that you want to add on these Chilean Mausers, I'm sure somebody's going to go in depth on the history about them because they always tend to do that. They're going to tell me exactly what this thing is sighted in at, zeroed in at. Uh, they're going to tell me everything about everything about this rifle. I'm sure we have some incredible experts out there. And I don't necessarily know much about the Chilean Mausers. I do know that this one was made in Berlin and it's got all sorts of, uh, cartouches and insignias and all sorts of uh what's it called crests all over it we got ourselves a crest on the receiver right here we got ourselves our serial number we have a bunch of uh non-english words right here that i'm not even going to try to pronounce we got the serial number on the side of the spot, uh, stock right here along with a six-pointed star we have over here on the buttstock another crest of the rifle i'm not sure what that is so I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to tell me. This right here is what that crest looks like. It says 1895 on it, and there it is. The wood has a really beautiful tiger stripe to it, much like a lot of the Spanish Mausers that I've seen. So I'm not sure where it is that they get their wood from, but I imagine it would be a similar area that the Spanish got their wood from. I'm not sure if it's domestic or not. I don't know much about these rifles or uh, where it is that they came from. I know that this one was made in Germany. I'm not sure if they were getting wood from Spain or not, but I do know that I've seen Spanish rifles with beautiful tiger striping on it, much like this one right here has. So thanks for watching, folks. Uh, let me know what you guys think down below. I'm going to go ahead and grab me another rifle and make another video before I go about my day and get around to handling all the various things that I have to handle today. So I'm going to go handle that. You guys go off, have yourself a fantastic day. And of course, thanks for watching.
I've done this. Bonnie and Clyde be damned. <laughs> Poor man's Garen. <laughs> it's a shame that bolt-action shotguns aren't uh, more mainstream.